This tutorial will guide you step by step in using your RAD7 to conduct a one day measurement. Under these settings, the RAD7 will continuously monitor radon at the deployment location to give an accurate and precise measurement of radon in the area as well as its variability. The RAD7 has eight protocols pre programmed into it, and these are described in the user manual. But for now, let's conduct a quick and easy one day test. Before you begin your test, you want to make sure that you have all of the equipment you need. For this application of the RAD7, you'll need the following RAD7 accessories in addition to the RAD7 itself. The first item you will need is a 3 foot long piece of vinyl tubing with adapters. Be sure to pick up tubing that has one large 5 16 inch segment for connection to the laboratory desiccant and one small 1 8 inch segment with an inlet filter for connection to the inlet port of the RAD7. You'll need your laboratory desiccant and also the portable printer with four AA batteries and thermal printing paper. We are using our 12 volt power input with 12 volt power supply, but for those RAD 7s with an AC power input, you may use this instead. To begin our one day measurement, remove the bridge tubing from the inlet of the RAD 7. You may leave it connected to the outlet of the RAD 7 to keep from losing it. With your three foot long vinyl tubing, attach the end with the white filter to the inlet of the RAD 7. Be sure to twist down on the white filter to keep the connection airtight. The other end of the vinyl tubing gets connected to the laboratory desiccant. You want to connect the tubing to the end furthest from the cap, or if your laboratory desiccant has already been used, furthest from the pink indicator desiccant. Since our RAD7 is already plugged in, we may turn it on. As the RAD7 initializes, you should see the parameters of its last use display across the screen. You may skip this display by pressing the menu button. When the RAD7 is finished initializing, the test screen is displayed. From this screen, press Enter and arrow over to Perch. Press Enter. If you listen closely to your RAD7, you should hear the pump start. Your RAD7 is now drawing in atmospheric air through the desiccant and into its chamber and emitting the spent air back through its outlet. The RAD7 display will say, Stop Purge, but we won't push any buttons until we're actually ready to begin the one day test. While your RAD7 is purging, you may use this time to set up the infrared printer. Your new RAD7 is supplied with two pieces of Velcro. Remove the nonstick label from the hook or hard side of both Velcro pieces. Without detaching the loop and hook sides of the Velcro, Stick the unmasked side of the Velcro onto the bottom of the infrared printer, being sure not to stick the Velcro on the battery cover. Remove the nonstick label from the loop or soft side of the Velcro. And without separating the pieces again, stick the printer between the two green lines. It's best to stick it closer to the bottom than the top, where the RAD7 is labeled printer and marked with arrows. After purging for at least 5 minutes, arrow over to Yes on the display screen and press Enter. The first step in making your one day measurement is to be sure your RAD7 clock is set to the right date and time. From the test menu, arrow over to Setup and press Enter. From here, arrow over to Clock to set the date and time of the RAD7 clock. Time is given in hours, minutes, and seconds. The arrow keys change the numbers. Pressing Enter will confirm your entry. The next display shows the date and day, month, and year. These settings can be changed in the same manner as the time. To program the RAD7 for our one day reading, we will press menu and arrow over to setup. At the setup display, press enter. The first parameter we encounter is protocol. At protocol, we press enter and arrow over to one day. This protocol is programmed into your RAD7 and includes information that tells the RAD7 how to take its measurements. We can check on how these measurements are run by arrowing through the rest of the setup displays. The tone option is not set using the one day protocol. We can set it to chime to hear a chime at the end of each cycle, or we can set it to Geiger to hear beeps during counts. But because we are in an office environment, I am going to change this option to off so that the RAD7 isn't beeping an alarm throughout the measurement period. The format option allows you to choose how much information is printed by the infrared printer every hour. 
I will set this to short. And right now, our data is recording units of picocuries per liter of air, degrees Celsius for temperature. No matter the length of printed record or what units you choose, all data will be stored in the RAD7 memory, and I will show you how to download this information in a subsequent video. Now the RAD7 is ready to record. Turn the printer on using the sliding button on the side. The light under the feed button will glow green. Turn the RAD7 off and back on. The settings will now be included on the top of the printed record. Prior to officially beginning our measurement or leaving our RAD7 unattended, we can review the header of our printed record to verify that the program is correct. The header first shows basic information about the RAD7 you are using to include the serial number in its last factory calibration. The date the RAD7 was last used is shown next, followed by the current date. Lastly, the current settings, in this case for our one-day protocol, are printed at the bottom of the record. These include parameters such as how long each cycle will be in minutes, the RAD7 mode, and our manually entered tone and format options. To begin the measurement, from the test screen, arrow over to start and press enter. You should hear the pump start. The pump will keep running until the relative humidity drops below 10%, after which the pump will run for 5 minutes at the start of each measurement cycle and then for just 1 minute every 5. For the next 24 hours, your RAD7 will take measurements using the one-day protocol we programmed into it. During the run, you may arrow through the display screen to monitor your one-day measurement as it progresses. The first display appears like this. The current run number is shown in the upper left-hand corner. In this case, it is Run 1, Cycle 3. The detector status and test mode are shown next to it from left to right. The time left for this run is shown in the lower left and the lower right corner shows the total number of counts since the beginning of the current cycle. If you press the right arrow key once, the display will show the last run and cycle number, the rate on reading and its statistical uncertainty followed by a P for pico curious per liter. If we press the right arrow key again, the internal temperature is given, and next to that, the internal relative humidity reading. When testing, you want to be sure that this reading is maintained at less than 10% by using your laboratory desiccant. The bottom left shows the battery voltage, which should range between 6 to 7.1 volts, and the lower right shows the pump current. A pump current above 90 mA is considered a sign of trouble, suggesting that there is a blockage in the flow path or your filter may be clogged. Pressing the right arrow again, we see a screen that displays diagnostic values for high voltage and duty cycle, leakage current, and signal voltage. The next menu show the data for each of the RAD 7's 8 counting windows. The displays show the window letter, the counts per minute observed in that window, the statistical uncertainty in counts per minute, and also the percent of the total counts during the test that fall within that window. Although the uncertainty reported on individual measurements may be very high at low radon readings, the uncertainty of the final average will be much lower and more precise. As always, you may press the menu button to exit all of these displays. To return to where you can view the status of your RAD7 again, press enter, and at status, press enter again. After 24 hours, the RAD7 will be done with its one day run. The printed log should include the status of the RAD7 prior to beginning the run and a printout for each half hour period. Regardless of the format we chose for each printed cycle, at the end of the one day measurement, we will also receive a bar graph with the mean concentration of radon for every half hour measurement and one final printout of the spectrum showing the activities of polonium-218 in window A and polonium-214 in window C. The one-day measurement is now finished. You may purge your RAD7 as we did at the beginning of the video and turn your RAD7 off. The next tutorial will show how to download your RAD7 using the Durage Capture software.